Hey, welcome back into today's video. The Ref Reports, the news that matters to you. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Dog the Bounty Hunter in relation to uh, Gabby Petito and that situation. We're going to be talking about um, Corpse Husband and some things that went on there and a few other things in today's episode of The Rep Reports. There was a situation to do with Corpse Husband and a face leak drama. If you're unfamiliar with Corpse Husband, he's an American musician and YouTuber who's best known for his music and faceless work on YouTube. He's most particularly known for his horror story narration and Among Us Let's Play content and having a, a very deep or low pitched bass voice. Twitter users were convinced that Corpse had revealed his face as a couple posts went viral suggesting the same. Corpse himself didn't actually address these speculations, but Twitter was completely uh, divided over this. There was a part that was like, this is him, and they were saying some really rude things, which we're going to get into that, and there was another part that was just like, well, this is fake. The article goes on to say that this isn't the first time Twitter users have claimed the streamer did a face reveal, and this time around, many strongly believed that Corpse deliberately revealed his face. Now, obviously, I'm not going to show you the pictures that did come out that people speculated were him, but I'm going to show you people's reactions and just the general conversation, how it was just, it wasn't very good. One user saying, I hope your intentions were not to insult the way he looks. I'm not a fan of him, but I'm also not a fan of putting one's looks down for no reason. The person said, this was most definitely my intention, babe. Another person saying, if you're going to make fun of somebody's appearance online, the least you can do is show your face unless you're as ugly as you sound. Yes, I'm still upset about the corpse husband face leak. Another saying, in response, for real, like even if it wasn't corpse, these people are still making fun of a person, a human. It's so disgusting. It's nearly the whole dream face leak all over again. Honestly, understandable if faceless content creators stay faceless. And I do think that this is pretty gross. I mean, the guy, he's not, this is not confirmed face reveal, and some of the critics, they're using this as an opportunity to belittle him for his alleged looks. And I just find that entirely distasteful, and uh, I don't really understand that. The guy's not done anything to anyone. One user saying, Corpse Husband is already self-conscious about his looks something he has mentioned before, and people bullied him for an alleged face reveal leak. If you engage in that behavior without a crumb of self-reflection, you are genuinely disgusting. Another saying, in all honesty, this whole situation is extremely stupid. I don't care if Corpse Husband does not look conventionally attractive. This was never the point. I support his content. I don't know if his face leaks were real. Just please stop doxing him. He deserves better. I agree with this frog. Corpse has also said on Instagram that somebody asked, what do you usually reply with when somebody IRL asks you why you cover your face? Love your vids. I think it's pretty obvious to anyone that knows me well that I hate how I look, so they don't really question it. If they do, I just literally reply with, I hate myself, and it doesn't go much further. He actually did a podcast with Anthony Padilla where he talked about uh, the pressure that he felt like he'd be under about this kind of situation. I think that you're more confident now in your decision to always be faceless than, than you were before. Last year was at my breaking point with it, where I was just gonna like be less careful until it inevitably happened. And now I'm, I feel like I have to be really, really careful again. I, I feel like I would be happier in a world where I could be myself openly and not worry about like hiding from everybody. But I do think it's also the best decision for me because I don't think I could handle that many people like judging me at once. Corpse has also talked in depth about his uh, health issues, and I just genuinely think that uh, people shouldn't put this on him or this type of pressure. I don't think it's right. That's just how I feel. I personally believe it's none of anyone's business online what this guy looks like, but I do want to know what you guys think about this. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, in the news. Dog the Bounty Hunter claims to have a lead on Gabby Petito case. Now, if you guys have not heard about the Gabby Petito case, it was a, a tragic circumstance where um, a girl went on a trip with her fiancé, and the fiancé was the only one that came back. I did a video uh, sort of breaking down this situation. I'll put that in the pinned comment below. Um, it's a very tragic situation, and the fiancé, his name is Brian Laundry. No one can find him but apparently Dog the Bounty Hunter is on the case. So we had a very good lead come up today that he was down here in this park, not very far away. We checked our lead out, it is confirmed. 
the parents were down here two times. It was September 1st through the 3rd and September 6th through the 8th. They registered to stay at this park. They were registered, went through the gate, they're on camera, they were here. And they did enter, they did come here. Allegedly, what we're hearing is two people left on the 8th, three people came in on the 6th, and two people left on the 8th. I think he's been here for sure. So, there's a lot of little islands around the area where we're at that he could get to on a canoe. We talked to the caretakers today of the islands. They said he could be out here, yeah. that he was here for sure, not over in the swamp. If you don't know, Brian Laundrie is a person of interest in the death of his fiance, whose body was found in a Wyoming National Park earlier this month. He was last seen by his family on September 14th. They told police he went to Carlton Reserve, a nearly 25,000 acre preserve in Sarasota County. And then in this update from Dog the Bounty Hunter, it, we come to find out that it's a possibility that his parents have been helping him evade police this entire time. Now, one recent CNN article says that the FBI actually asked for items that might contain his DNA. It says that during the agency's visit at the family home, the FBI requested some personal items belonging to Brian Laundrie to assist them with DNA matching, and Brian's parents provided the FBI with what they could. Now, given in the light that there's a possibility that the parents are helping their kid with this, I don't know how good I feel about them providing with what they could, nor would I trust them giving what they could. So currently it says the FBI is now leading the search. So I know there's a lot of people that are helping out in this situation, Dog the Bounty Hunter being one of them. So when I find something out, I'm going to update you here. Uh, I hope everything gets resolved and I hope that uh, peace is brought to this situation uh, soon. That being said, also in the news. Now, my last video was uh, Trisha Paytas is trying to hide this from you, where we went into detail about how she had deleted over 1,300 videos. Some of these videos were absolutely disgusting. Some of the grossest content that I've ever seen. If you haven't watched my video, I'll put it in the pinned comment. But uh, generally, uh, she has been pretty quiet about this, but she did release one video. And on her self-titled Trisha Paytas channel, she released a video called Keeping the Lies Going. Now, this does seem to reference the current drama that's going on, which, which we're going to get into that. But I do want to say, pertaining to my last video on this, the videos, as I said, were absolutely disgusting. Some of them was her role-playing uh, children in their final moments of life uh, and just general situations like that. It was, it was really bad. So, uh, uh, insert whatever statement and put it in the comment section below. What she's about to do is she's explaining a movie that she just really connected with and uh, she felt was relevant to her current life. But what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing and what I think you're going to see too is that this is more of like a literal, literal projection of what is actually happening. And I can see it's almost like she's trying to get the viewers to relate to her situation. But I want you to listen to what she says. This is a horrible person. But it's not a horrible person. It's someone who has right. anxiety that has gotten a bad situation, but he's not a bad person. And that's what people there need to know. Intention. Of course. Okay. His intentions were good. The outcome was good. That's why I feel when he admitted to lying, he became a good character again. And then all it was forgiven. But before that, I was like, hmm. He can't get out of this situation. No, but that's a real human. A real human sometimes make bad decisions, and that doesn't mean they're a bad person. Right. So. So here we have Trisha saying that uh, this person's not a bad person because they just had some anxiety and it got them into a bad situation. I'm just saying it sounds very familiar. It just sucks. People don't know the whole story to everything, and that just goes to show. And like social media can be awful. And and maybe not like the character. I forgot her name. Oh, I freaking forgot her name. The female character with the braids that did the um. Something with a. Mm, I don't know, man. I don't know, Trisha. I don't know. I, I kind of, I think I feel like I see why this movie resonated. But uh, I'm going to leave it there. I want to hear what you guys think about this. Also, in the news. I thought this was a kind of a heartwarming story we could add to this. A David Bautista offers reward for information about ABUSED puppy. Not only did he offer a reward for information leading to the arrest of the people that hurt this puppy, but he adopted the puppy into his pack. That is so heartwarming. That's wholesome. 
Uh, the Tampa Bay Humane Society says uh, Sage was just brought into us with a metal chain embedded. Uh, oh man, uh, we're currently prepping her for surgery to remove the chain. Um, you guys can just read this. Uh, that this is terrible. Oh my! Oh my God! Oh my God! I'm just glad the dog's okay. I'm glad. Uh, thank God for Batista. Amazing. Posted about a puppy that was horribly abused uh, and offered a $5,000 reward for uh, any information leading to the arrest and conviction of the, the horrible human being responsible for this. Uh, my brother here, Lewis uh, Safe from Safe Canine, who trains my dogs, is helping me out with this and also. The Humane Society of Tampa Bay has also offered $1,500 leading to the arrest and, and conviction of this person. And Alvarez Injury Law, who, who works out of Florida, also another $5,000. So that's $11,500 leading to the information, for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of this person. So uh, the bad news is we don't really have any solid leads now. We are trying to catch this person responsible because it's a three-month-old puppy that was, it was horrib horribly abused to and needed surgery. It's recovering from his surgery. That's the update. Uh, the bad news is, again, we haven't found uh, this person responsible for it. But the good news is, today, the puppy you know as Sage actually became Penny Bautista. So I'd like to introduce you, the newest member of my family. <laughs> oh, and there she is, healing up, nice and recovered. She is now a Bautista, and she will never be abused again a day in her life, not a second in her life. She's I'm about to live her best puppy life ever. So anyway, thank you guys for helping us out. And that's the update is uh, Sage is now Penny Batista and she has her forever home. I love happy endings and I love happy endings like this. Uh, I really enjoyed this. So um, as interesting as it was, there's always something that's more interesting to me. That's right. You guessed it. I want to know what you think. So why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and your interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up for those likes as always, brothers and sisters. I will see you in the next video. Positivity turtles. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what the positivity turtle is, it is a ceramic turtle that my mother gave me to put in front of me to remind me to stay positive when I cover really difficult topics. That's the birth of it. That's how it came. And uh, I told you guys about it one day and you started spamming positivity turtles. So uh, let's put some positivity turtles in the chat. And I appreciate uh, you guys for being here. Thank you to everybody that's donated to the fundraiser. We have currently raised $12,354 for rain to help survivors in difficult situations. If you have donated or you would like to donate, uh, we've met goal already. But as I said, uh, we are pushing to 15000 I really want to get it. Even if we don't get all the way to 15 k I'm going to come in and uh, finish it off. And uh, I'm really proud of this. Also, I want to say thank you to my patrons. I really appreciate your continued ongoing support. If you would like to support me and what I do here on this channel, the Patreon link will also be in the pinned comment. Click the link, check it out, see if it's something that you're into, something that fits for you. And um, that's just another way to show that you're repping. If you're not repping, you're Greg and how you do that. I'll just subscribe and notification turn on. Be in the comment section after every single video because I'm going to be there. Greg the Cat's going to be there and the rest of Red Sox from me as well. And I expect to see you there too because this channel loves you.